And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Lily Nova, astrophotographer, ET contactee, CE5 practitioner, and cosmic channeler. Lily, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. (laughs) Me too. And you know, this is kind of special because what I usually do on Saturday nights is I have an open live stream where anybody can come and join and talk for like 10 minutes. And sometimes there's some space where I just have to have things to talk about while people are getting on and, and joining me or in between guests. That day, I was looking for UFO news and I found Lily's article about um, her contact with aliens and stuff. It's so great because now I've got her here. (laughs) Yes, thank you for having me. So if you don't mind, let's kind of just start with your background. How did you get involved with aliens in the first place? So um, it really kind of was a spontaneous, random thing. Um, You know, I always knew that there was something out there, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. Um, and I wasn't really into UFOs. They, they were kind of the last things on my mind. But um, whenever COVID hit and we were, you know, in the midst of the lockdown, I began shooting astrophotography. And so I would take my camera, I would go out under the stars, you know, travel to kind of rural places and take pictures of the night sky. And um, I just fell in love with it. So I was spending a lot of nights outside. And um, after about a few months of doing that, I ended up having my first experience, very, very, a very close encounter with a UFO. And um, after that, it just escalated. It became for a while there, it seemed like everywhere I turned, there was one. And I, and I really feel like they wanted me to take pictures of them. You know, I was out there with my camera. So I think they were purposefully, you know, reaching out to me because a, I'm open-minded and, um, and have a uh, good intentions. And also because I had a camera <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it, um, it skyrocketed from there really. And then I developed kind of a, seemed to be kind of like a relationship with them and, um, capturing evidence of them and sharing and yeah, it really escalated from there. Prior to all this, do you have somewhere in your history that you've had some kind of supernatural event happen in your life or a psychic event or anything that could be a catalyst to you meeting ETs? Yeah, that's a great question. (coughs) Um, I've always been very (coughs) empathetic and intuitive, I'd say, and open-minded. I always felt kind of a calling to space in the stars. I always had that connection. Um, I did have one kind of spiritual awakening a few years prior where I felt I had an experience with God or source. Um, But besides that, not really. Um, Nothing had previously happened. Even when I contacted MUFON, the mutual UFO network, the, you know, the largest investigators, they asked the same thing, you know, what were you doing that brought this on? And they asked me if I had been abducted before. I've never been abducted, at least not that I know of, but I really, I truly do not think that that's ever happened. I've never had any experiences, but I was also researching the science of consciousness at the time when this started. Can you tell us about that first experience? So the first night that I saw them, it was just a normal night. I went outside before bed onto my front porch and and just to take a deep breath, it was last November. And I looked to the left and immediately to my left, I saw a bright light hovering over the neighborhood and it was hovering in that very cliche hovering ufo kind of way so um i took out my phone camera and started trying to record it and i was like holy smokes i think this is an actual ufo um and after that there was an orange glowing light that appeared at the end of my street that caught my attention 
So I looked over there and then whenever I looked back, a second craft had appeared that was much larger, much closer. It was like a diamond triangular shape, some weird shape that I'd never seen before. And it, I was looking up at it because it was so close and it started going up, down, side to side really fast, nothing like anything I'd ever seen before. And then it began coming straight towards me slowly. And um, I got, I kind of chicken out, chickened out a little bit. Um, I took a step back to kind of conceal under the porch and it literally did. It came right to me, right above me, right over my roof and then just vanished. The next thing I know, it was just gone. How big do you think the craft was? It wasn't like a huge mothership, but I feel like um, big enough to where maybe like a handful, maybe five crew members could be on it. So maybe the size of like three cars or something? Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Was it your typical saucer shape or or what? No, this was very different. Um, it was it was an odd shape. It was mostly like a diamond um, and it had some other shapes kind of coming off it, off of it, I feel like. But for the most part, it was a diamond and it had red and blue green lights, just a line of lights going around it. Very dim lights. Did you see any markings or any windows? No, I did not. I wish I would have though, but I don't, I don't think that there were any, at least not that I could see. So how did you react after that? Were you like shaken up? Yeah. Uh, and you can even hear it on the recording because I didn't realize till after I was still recording on my phone and you can see it appear as for some reason it appeared as like a white light, even though the lights on it were red and green, it was strange, but you can see it moving up and down side to side. Um, and you can hear me, I start getting shaken up and, uh, I take a step back and I really just kind of froze up. Um, and after that, I was pretty spooked, honestly, um, because it was right outside my house. It was obviously targeting me. Um, it came right to me and then disappeared. So I was pretty shaken up after that. Um, and I started kind of diving into, you know, what could this have been? Who, who, what, why? And, um, the curiosity, I feel like, was a little bit more than the fear, but definitely shaken up. So at that point, you weren't shaken up enough to run away from it. You started you know, researching it and learning how to initiate contact. Is that correct? Yeah, it took a little while for, for that to kind of happen, but I didn't feel threatened by it. I definitely felt in shock as anybody would be as they're discovering like, wow, we really are not the only ones here. There are other, you know, beings from other planets. So it was a huge paradigm shift. Um, but then, yeah, I believe the curiosity became, it just fascinated me. I wanted to know how did it vanish above my house? Where did it go? Did it go into another dimension? Um, you know, how does this work? Who are they and why are they here? And I felt kind of a big calling to that in, in my heart, really. It, it took a couple months. I think they let that soak in. And then they began appearing to me again. And I had another very, uh, a few, three really close encounters with multiple crafts in a row a couple months later. And then after that, I was like, okay, obviously they are trying to tell me something. They're around for a reason. And um, then I just became curious, just fascinated. I basically became an investigator. <laughs> so like a couple months later, were you out doing astrophotography again and they just started showing up? Yeah. So it was, it was just me by myself. I went out to shoot astrophotography one night and I went to a rural area and, um, was by myself at this park and, uh, I was sitting in my car, actually, it was probably like one o'clock in the morning, almost two o'clock in the morning. It was pretty late. And I see, suddenly I see um, an orange glowing light hovering on the horizon. And I watched it going back and forth and it was going up, kind of bouncing like a, like a bumblebee almost back and forth. And I looked around and there was another one 
to my other, to my right and to my left, um, doing the same thing. And then I looked around again, there were two more behind me in the tree lines. And then I look forward and there was some other lights that were in the trees in front of me, about 40, 50 feet in front of me. And, um, I realized, I think I'm surrounded by UFOs. <laughs> um, so that was pretty freaky. Um, but again, the curiosity, I wanted to record it. I wanted people to see this and know that they, you know, they do exist. So I stayed up there for hours recording them also because I was afraid to leave at that point. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if they know that I'm here, <laughs> um, which now I know they, they did know that I was there, but at the time, um, yeah, so that was my, and I got a lot of really cool, uh, footage from that night as well. And, um, yeah, since that happened, then they just started coming to me. I would just see them like everywhere. I turned every night for a while, well, about 15, um, different UFOs I saw in the matter of two weeks after that. That's when I realized, okay, this is, this is something else. This wasn't just a coincidence. And, um, for some reason it seems to be that I'm attracting them. And, uh, also at that time, it's when it came out in the news about the, the, that leaked footage from the Navy mm -hmm. and something about like the COVID bill having mm -hmm. that bit in it about extraterrestrials, all that happened like within the same couple weeks. That's when I realized, okay, this is actually happening. How did it progress into you initiating contact? So over the next few months, as I was researching them, and then I just became kind of like, just excited to catch them on camera and share what I was finding. And yeah, about a few months after that, I realized that I could initiate contact with them. And there's a, a proto protocol called CE5, which is just human initiated contact. Um, the first night that I went out and tried it, was I, I went with a, another person who was experienced in meditation and, and very spiritual and they were open to it. They had seen UFOs before. So we went out to go try this CE5 and um, we set our intention out. And within five minutes of getting out of the car, a golden glowing orb appeared and it seemed to be moving around to our questions because I was trying to figure out who are you and um and I closed my eyes and it telepathic telepathically sent me a vision of its inhabitants which is where which was where we get the blue woman so that's when I realized okay I can initiate contact with them and they can be very specific and this could be you know you can um kind of create this relationship with them so at that point you started a relationship with them and, and did, was this something that you did daily or how did that progress? Yeah. Um, it definitely became something that was daily. And I feel like having that, having a routine, um, definitely helps with, um, cause you know, you're building that relationship and, and you're setting that intention out and, um, yeah, it definitely became something I was doing daily and uh, they would show up and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the article I read about you, you described them as being blue and hairless and they were testing the waters with you. I yeah. believe that's what you were saying. Can you comment more on that? Yeah. I, I feel like they were definitely testing the waters with me, kind of seeing my reaction. If I would get too spooked, they either wouldn't appear or they would back off. Um, I feel like they gave me time to kind of come to terms with, with what was going on. And, um, and, uh, it's, you know, it definitely progressed after that, but the, the blue ones were the first ones that I saw. So they, they telepathically sent me a vision and I didn't know that that could even be a thing, um, but this is whenever I, I began having visions and it was a very beautiful woman with light blue skin who I saw and she was laying on a table and she had a 
silver gray skin tight suit on like a space suit like what you would see in like star wars or star trek and there were multiple beings behind her i couldn't see their faces but they were standing behind her and she was laying on this table and uh they were also wearing these gray silver suits and had light blue skin from what i could see and uh so those were the first ones that i saw and i believe those are the ones who were visiting me and who i was making contact with the most as it progressed i began seeing other ones through telepathic vision did they tell you where they're from and what species they are yeah so in and this is over months of progressing with this and i also feel like when this stuff begins happening um you begin getting signs and synchronicities like little hints just kind of fall into your lap um and i went to a meditation group this is before i had really developed um a strong communication with them well i was working on it but through the i think telepathy is also something that you can get better at as you become more in tune with it and more in tune with uh, your intuition and and your other senses your sixth sense and everything um and this lady told me she was very clairvoyant and she told me um you know I'm sensing Lyrans. I see Lyrans. And so that's, that was kind of the first clue. And then as I began doing more CE5 with them, connecting with them daily and developed my communication with them. They also told me from the, uh, the constellation Lyra is where they're from, but I don't believe that they are still there. I believe that is where they originated from and they had probably dispersed to other parts um, of the galaxy. And uh, I've also met or communicated with um, beings from Sirius and beings from Pleiades, the Pleiades star cluster. And as I began learning this, then I began finding a lot of resources on the internet that people have actually made contact with these beings back in like the forties and fifties. So it just, it blew my mind. It was a huge confirmation for me. I was checking out your YouTube channel and on your channel, you have some videos about star seeds. Mm -hmm. Did you find out from them that you are a star seed? And if so, is that how they were able to find you in this realm? Yeah, I, I believe so. And it's, it's kind of funny how it worked out because I had no idea what a star seed was. I didn't know anything about star seeds until probably maybe like six months into it. Um, and I told you, I, I saw that clairvo clairvoyant woman who said, um, I can see Lyrans, they're from Lyra. She also told me, um, Lily, your star family is here. And that my heart just dropped. <laughs> um, that's, that's when I found out and I saw another, uh, psychic and she told me also a connection with the Pleiadians and told me that I was one. I originate from these different places. And so, yeah, I believe I have a strong connection in there. Then I began learning about star seeds, which are just old souls that originate from other places, not earth could be from all over the galaxy or all over the universe. And if you believe in reincarnation and, and stuff like that, it, de it definitely makes sense. At first I thought it sounded a little weird, but um, you know, it definitely, it definitely makes sense. I think some people will say that we're all star seeds basically at some point. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. I think maybe some people just may be a little more than others if they have incarnated mostly on other other places so that might be a little bit stronger in in their soul if you will but yeah i i do i do believe that we are, are all star seeds mm -hmm. lily is kind enough to bring some of her photographs so i want to make sure that we have time for those so if you don't mind mm -hmm. can we talk about them and then we'll go from afterwards whatever time we have left then we'll go from there yeah um yeah of course so I do have a, a few photos that I've caught um, while I was out meditating. And that is a technique that you can use to connect with these beings. Um, I set up just my camera while 
Uh, and then I went to meditate and I caught a couple ships in this. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Here is one photo of me meditating. I set up a time lapse and I was just set the intention out. I was connecting with them. I could feel their presence. I did not actually see the ship because my eyes were closed. Mm. Um, but you can see a ship up here and I did catch it in three different photos. It looked different in each photo, which is also strange. I think it was kind of manifesting into the dimension. Um, so here's one of them. I have a better close up of it. That's interesting that you said that you were doing time lapse. Were you taking like one frame every minute or one frame every 30 seconds? And then you were there meditating for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes or, or what? Yeah. So I had it set to take a photo every two seconds, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's how I was able to catch it in three different photos. I could see it coming up and uh, the first photo, it looked more like a, like a little faint blob. And then you could see the ship uh, come out like this, but every photo looked a little different. Like it, it was materializing and dematerializing but I love taking time lapses while doing this because then you can get try and get multiple photos of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's like a bird or a plane or something, you will be able to see it, you know, through the whole time lapse. Right. But if it's just a weird shape that just pops in just for a second or a couple of photos, that's a good way to, um, to tell. So there's one of them. Um, Here's another one I caught. I'm in the park um, and I set up a time lapse again and uh, I caught these two triangles and it almost looks to be like a, a portal opening up or something strange. Were you standing with your eyes closed in that video? In this one? Um, like meditating no, I was, again? It, no, it's funny because I was actually like looking I wasn't looking at them, but I was looking in that direction. So there I was walking over to the bench and uh, they popped in that photo. They can be very fast. Um, I do have videos of them as well, but I think for me, because they know that I, I want to take pretty pictures of them and want to get photos of them, um, you know, they'll materialize just for maybe a second at times. Mm. But during this, I was doing and this is good for if anybody else would want to try this, try connecting with them. You can do it through meditation or also another, um, how before I even began meditating, what I would do is I was just out doing my passion shooting photography. So whenever you're in that creative flow state, you can connect with these higher realms and, um, you know, receive messages and, and stuff like that. So, um, that's a good way to connect with them in this photo and or the previous one did you not even know you got the photo i mean got the ship in the picture until you got home and started editing uh correct it was a surprise this one i saw it immediately after because i set it up to take 10 photos and again i could this is as i was um I had been practicing this for a while and I developed kind of a, a sixth sense of when they were there. And um, so I could feel them and I would kind of communicate with them telepathically. I didn't know that I had gotten them in this photo until after I took the photo though. Mm. Yeah. But I could feel them there. And this one, I actually saw this one. This is, um, this was the golden orb that appeared that sent me a vision of the, of the blue woman. What is in the background? It was cloudy. It was, there were, it was all clouds. It was raining even like sprinkling. So you couldn't see any stars. You couldn't even see the sky. So my friend didn't even think that it would work if we, you know, tried to make contact with them. And then this golden orb appeared and, uh, moved closer to us and we were just looking up at it. So it's cloudy in the background. That's what okay. it looks like. So that. I didn't realize that you were aiming the camera at the sky in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just pointing up shooting at the, this one, I wasn't shooting before they appeared. I got the camera out after this golden orb appeared. And I was like, can I, can I take your picture? <laughs> 
Do you feel that that orb was illuminating the clouds to be orange around it? There was a little bit of illumination. I think a little bit of illumination. If you look at the clouds are kind of orangish too. I was just wondering if that came from the from the orb or the street lights. Oh no. Yeah, there were no lights. It could be just because it it was a uh, it was really dark too. Um so yeah, there's I think I think they were it was illuminating it a little bit though, yeah. Since you were yeah. looking at it, how big do you think that orb was? It looked pretty small. Um maybe like the size of, you know, your hands. It was really small. Hmm. Very small. Um yeah, so that kind of threw me off, but I think they can maybe project their consciousness through these little orbs and other highly advanced things that we probably <laughs> don't quite understand. How close to you was it? This one was pretty close. I'd say probably 30 feet in the air mm -hmm. above us and then maybe 20, 20, 30 feet in front of us. Mm. Yeah, and it close. moved. Yeah. And, and it moved closer whenever we asked, because we wanted to make sure is, are we seeing this right? Is it, mm -hmm. is this really, you know, UFO? And then it got closer and kind of jumped around a little bit. Can you zoom it in again, please? Yeah. It's pretty sharp. I mean, it's pretty, the, the sharpness is pretty, pretty good. Thank you. You can see some kind of some pulsing, um, some squigglies in there too. Do you feel like the light was pulsing when you were looking at it? I couldn't really tell that that it was pulsing, but now that I think of it, it, it probably was because a lot of these that I've seen, they do, um, they just illuminate kind of oddly and they seem to be changing um, in, in moving within themselves. Yeah. It appears that it has like a brighter rim to it, but it doesn't complete at the end. Does that make sense to you? Um, yeah, it does look like it has a brighter rim to it. But the bright outer edge doesn't complete. There's a little loosened spot right there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, I noticed that too. Does It looks like there's a little bite taken out of it. <laughs> right, right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're um they're and that's what I really just became fascinated. Like, how does this how do these things work? What are they made out of? Um, I do have another uh just a quick video if you'd like to see um, sure the one that was in front of me at the at the astronomy park, my second encounter ever. There were there were lights in the trees only like 30 feet in front of me, and um I recorded it and I caught a beam of light coming out of it. So here's the craft and you'll see a beam of light appear right there. Okay. Before you play it real quick, it looks like that there are three lights. Is it a triangular shaped craft with a light on each corner? I think this one might've been, I think it might've been a bowl. It was really dark. So I couldn't get, um, like a good picture of it because it was right behind some trees i wasn't sure at the time was this two separate crafts because there were another there was another light over here and there was a light over here or if it was kind of one big saucer type craft yeah i wasn't 100 percent sure but um so here's the uh but a little beam of light appears right through here Isn't that wild? Yeah, I saw that. That was cool. Yeah. Shoo. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <gasps> yeah. That's awesome. And I think that, oh, I can also show this is um a being, a light being. I Now, I, again, the, with this one, I did not see it in front of me. But I was meditating a lot, and I could feel their presence. Mm-hmm. I just took a picture in the basement uh, in a classroom that I had abandoned. I was teaching nutrition classes before this. I hadn't been down there in a long time. Just took a picture with my phone 
and um, afterwards realized there was this silhouette of a light being Mm -hmm. and there appears to be some shimmering stuff around it too but you got this silhouette kind of looks like there's maybe a head right here if you zoom in it's like rainbow iridescent looking Mm -hmm. so it makes you wonder how many things are actually around us that we just can't see with our own eyes you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i'm not a camera specialist but I have to ask, is there any way that that can be some type of artifact within the film or the, or the digital exposure? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so with this one. Yeah, I really, do. I, I think this is, this is something, this is definitely something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was no other like light or anything that it could have been. And I took this with my, with my, um my iPhone too. No, but you didn't even see it. You were just taking a picture of the room randomly because you felt a being there. I was just taking a picture of the room to take a picture of the room for memory's sake. Um, But I have caught orbs and other things around me that whenever, because I also, I create content and create videos Mm -hmm. and I'll be, I've recorded myself before and then just like an orb or even like a, weird kind of slanty line light just kind of weird manifestations have tend to happen around me (laughs) um just kind of randomly yeah Hmm. yeah pretty interesting you don't happen to have that video of your very first time you took one on the porch do you i do but it's very the dot in it the the light of it it's it's very small and it's it's hard to see um i can see it but um yeah it's it's very quick you have to kind of slow it down and and zoom in i do i would like to edit um a copy of that to just kind of like zoom in and and slow it down so that but because that that was pretty cool but yeah kind of hard to see because it was so dark right um i do i do have an an orb from a, a CE5 that I was doing live on TikTok, actually, where I was doing a, a group and we had an orb up here. This is a video? Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting too. It seems like it accelerates. Yeah. It changes speed. It, it goes kind of in a, it doesn't go in a straight line. It's moving around. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, There, yeah, these different manifestations, they can come in many different ways. It uh, appears. I found through this, that it, um, it, it seems to be closely related with like the spiritual realm and, you know, other, other dimensions. Mm. And, and so there's a lot of different manifestations that can appear. Do you think ETs mostly exist in the astral realm and then they pop in here for a little while, but they're mostly in a different realm? Yeah. I think for some of them, definitely. I think some of them are more of astral beings or just maybe they don't even have a physical body. Um, some of these beings, um, yes, yeah, for sure. Because some of them, they are very humanoid like us and they have physical bodies, but they're at a different density and in different frequencies. And I think they could probably take on multiple forms or have an astral version of themselves where they can travel and then a physical version, um, but I do believe that some of them may not even have a dense 3D physical body. Are you journaling your communications with them? Uh, I was in the beginning and I kind of stopped for a little while, but I'm starting to, I'm starting to again. Yeah. And I'm starting to draw the beings that I see Mm -hmm. um, and kind of channel messages from them. Um, 
so yeah, I'm going to be journaling that again because it is really fascinating and I've learned, learned a lot from them for sure. Do you happen to have any of the drawings of them that you can show us? Yeah, I do actually. Let me grab it real quick. So this was a woman who I just saw the other day during a meditation. It was my first time seeing her. She was very human looking, very beautiful. Oh no. Hmm. Yeah, she does look very humanoid. Yeah, she had fair skin. Sorry, I can also send you a copy of this too. Um, light skin, brown hair. And she was wearing kind of a, like a Greek, almost like a Greek goddess looking white dress. So, um, and I got that she was uh, a Pleiadian woman. Do any of them contact you in your dreams? Yeah, I've had a few experiences in my dreams. I've seen a, a UFO. Well, I, I before bed, I was kind of testing something out and I asked if they could visit me in my dreams. And that night I was having a normal dream, just doing something normal. And uh, it's like they literally just popped right into my dream just to say hello. Suddenly, just randomly, this UFO comes up and comes like right by me, right in front of me as if, and I kind of get the message like, Hey, we're here. And then it just kind of left. Um, but I have had dreams too, where I've, they've been teaching me something or kind of coaching me through something. And then I'll wake up maybe in the middle of the night and I'll like, I'll remember it and I'll kind of feel whatever they've been um, teaching me or explaining. Hmm. But I don't see them much in my dreams, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, that they are there and I could hear them communicating with me. In the beginning, when you started communicating with them, was there any period of self doubt or like, am I going crazy? Is this really real? Yeah, there was a, <laughs> for sure. Um, because nobody believed me at first. Um, and yeah, nobody believed me for a while. Then I began capturing, you know, enough, enough evidence where it became undeniable. And, but yeah, there was definitely, definitely some strange things would happen too. Like they've given me signs in the clouds and just these, these signs and synchronicities. Yeah. It definitely makes you kind of question your <laughs> sanity. Um, but in, and now I'm finding, especially with other people who are learning about the star seed thing and, or identify as that, um, a lot of these things are happening to people all over the world. Um, these kind of just odd signs and synchronicities. And, um, yeah, so there was definitely a time where I, I had questioned it, but, um, yeah, I, I know for sure with a hundred percent certainty that, um, you know, everything I experience is, experience is, is true. But yeah, sometimes you kind of have to pinch yourself and, and check yourself, especially in the beginning. Have they told you that at any point there's going to be full worldwide disclosure? They have given me the date um, in the 2030s. Well, I asked, when will you, when can you come down and when can I actually see you face to face? And, um, and I've gotten 2030s. So I think by the 2030s, there will be full disclosure and we may, they may even be among us. Mm -hmm. Darn, that's a little long for me to wait. Yeah. I think over the next few <laughs> years though, <laughs> over the next few years, um, if everybody keeps doing their part and helping to spread the message, sharing their stories, I think over the next few years are definitely, I mean, we're heading in that direction. There's always been, there's already been um, people in government, like the, I can't remember his name, but uh, in Canada, somebody in Canada mentioned, spoke about it on the news and even mentioned four different types of ET races that he's aware of that have been visiting earth and said that they've been visiting earth for a long time. And um, there was another uh, gentleman chief of something in the middle East who also mentioned it and mentioned the galactic federation said that there was a 
federation of these of these beings and they're already working with world leaders on earth so yeah i think disclosure is coming sooner than we think um it may take a little bit longer for them to actually be on openly on the ground with us but yeah i think the next few years is going to be very um transformative and, and a lot's going to come to light can you tell us anything that they revealed to you that was shocking or surprising? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, yeah. So when I first began meditating with them, they would, you know, they would send me these visions and they showed me, they've showed me different pieces in time. They've shown me ancient native American, um, if you've ever heard of Kokia Mounds, it's a, uh, it's not too far from where I live actually, but it's the oldest city in America. It's ancient. Everybody disappeared from it. Nobody knows what happened, but there are these ancient mounds and they've showed me that back when people, civilization was actually living there. And I saw the native Americans working in the fields and I saw two different types of ET beings the blue ones, Lyrans, and uh, the Pleiadians. The they've got fair skin and blonde hair, and they had, they were working with the Native Americans. They were together with the Native Americans, and they had underground, like an underground city under it. They showed me these tunnels leading underground. Um, so that really blew my mind. So they've gave me some um, some history lessons, and they've even shown me dinosaurs and ufos and that there has been yeah and that there has been um a war you know many there was a war with uh i guess the, the et's um back in the day day but they've been here for a long time so those things were pretty mind-blowing those are the two big ones that come off the top of my head oh and atlantis <laughs> they've showed me atlantis as well <laughs> So are they insinuating that they made the dinosaurs go extinct? Oh, you know what? I, I never asked that question. Um, that could be, that could be a possibility. Yeah. And I'm not sure I did. I was more just shocked that there were UFOs around while the, the dinosaurs were around, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened to them. That'll be a good question to um, look into though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How often are you in contact with them now? So mostly it is during uh, meditation <clears throat> and I meditate, I try to meditate daily. Um, they, they won't always pop up, but sometimes I'll, I'll get a vision of whichever one's connecting with me um, and receive some messages from them. Mm -hmm. And when I go out physically to do CE fives, it's been really cold. So I haven't been doing it as much. We just had like a huge snowmageddon storm. Um, so I haven't been out making physical contact as much, but uh, I was doing it about every day. And then as it warms up a little bit, I'll be doing it again. But I'd say definitely like every, at least weekly, definitely weekly. All right, Lily, what is your YouTube channel so people can find it? Yeah, my YouTube channel is Lily Nova Starseed. And on my YouTube, I will be sharing, I've got a few resources already. I have an interview that kind of dives more into this, more into the, the Starseed and how you can connect with these beings and make contact with them. I'll be sharing more ce5 protocols things that i use and um evidence and um and then on instagram and tiktok my name is lily nova dot i n dot space so at lily nova in space and i share a lot of content on this on those as well do you have a website so i'm working on a new website but i do have lily nova space art dot com and that has some information on the ce5 and how you can contact me and it also has my astrophotography and uh mer merchandise that i've been that i've created so i have star seed and kind of ufo and space merch kind of all that fun stuff on there cool <laughs> mm -hmm. do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about 
Yeah. So besides the uh, CE5 protocols and in and, and helping to teach people how to connect with these beings, I also do star origin readings where I can go and find your origins, your specific history. And if you have any beings that are, you know, connecting with you and just more about where you've been and what can help you now. So um, that's been going really, really well. And the people that I've done have said it's been a very um, inspiring and um, encouraging and uh, yeah, really enlightening. So I do those as well. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions or chit chat with you. Are you open to that? And if so, how should they reach you? Yes. Um, if anybody has any questions, would just like to talk about this kind of thing, um, I would love for you to reach out to me. You can do so on Instagram or my email, which is lilynova.inspace at gmail.com. And my Instagram handle is the same, lilynova.in.space. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Just a, a last message would be that we have many positive beings who are helping the earth right now. And you can connect with these beings. They've helped me through so much and just discovering more about who I really am and our history and everything. And uh, it's just been a very beautiful experience. I, I feel love whenever I connect with them. And I just would love for everybody to experience um, that sort of thing. Um, it's a very positive, uplifting feeling. Mm. So just know that we have galactic uh, family out there, really. And we're not alone. Thank you for that message. And Lily, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing with us. I really appreciate you. And I wish you the best. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking to you. All right. Have a great evening. Thanks. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.